Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the CRU World Copper Conference 2022. Ivan O'Mines is proud and happy to take you on this virtual tour of the Kamo Kakula Copper Complex in Lulaba Province in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Kamo Kakula, after 25 long years of effort, is the highest grade major copper mine in the world the greenest major copper mine in the world, running on hydroelectricity with the lowest global warming footprint per unit of copper produced of any tier one copper mine in the world. Discovering and developing a tier one copper mine is uh, the most painful, difficult thing imaginable. It took us in this case close to 30 years of hard work, uh, working through a lack of infrastructure to the modern world we now find with a much better government in place, with hydroelectricity, excellent telecommunications, much better infrastructure, clean, renewable power, women trained and lots of beneficial impact in agricultural development, schools, hospitals, and fully integrated uh, fish farming, banana plantations, brick factories, all rapidly growing to service the population and the employees around the mine. We welcome you to come and see how this is all coming together. The copper mine that has resetting a whole new standard for ESG with very high employment of women and training and community development. So we're very proud on behalf of our 12,000 people in the Congo to take you on this virtual tour. Well, when one thinks about the DRC, obviously you immediately think about its extraordinary mineral wealth. Uh, the country has a number of world-class deposits uh, across a range of minerals. Gold, tin, lithium, cobalt, zinc, uh, and obviously copper. The DRC has a reputation of being a difficult country to do business in, and that is uh, obviously true to some extent. But if you take a longer term view, you have to conclude that the trends are positive. If you look at the last 20 years or so, you have to see that the security situation in the country has improved significantly. Elections have uh, become regular and recently there has been a peaceful handover of power between two presidents. And then if you look at the turn of the century where the country was virtually at an economic standstill, 20 years later it is the number one copper producer on the African continent and that is even before Kamoa copper production uh, came online. So then if you look 20 years ahead of or even beyond that, you, you have to conclude that the strategic importance of the DRC can only increase. And therefore, the, the world's vested interest in, in the stability and in the, in the development of the DRC uh, can also uh, only increase. Uh, because the DRC will be uh, a crucial country for the world's fight uh, against climate change for, for a number of reasons. Firstly, the Congo Basin absorbs about 2% of the yearly uh, CO2 emissions. Secondly, the DRC's hydro potential is unequaled. The DRC alone has about 100,000 megawatts in terms of, uh, of hydro potential, and therefore the growth of the DRC's economy can be powered in a way that is sustainable and that is green. And then lastly, a lot of the minerals that are crucial for the green energy transition, uh, thinking of lithium, cobalt, copper obviously, can be found uh, in the DRC and can be found at very high grades meaning that the environmental footprint per tonne to mine those minerals is a lot lower than in some uh, other geographies. Camoa's ownership structure is really where north and south and east and west meet. Uh, so at the direct level, uh, we have 20% uh, held uh, by the DRC government and 80% held by Camoa uh, Holdings. And then Camoa Holdings itself is essentially a 50-50 uh, joint venture between Ivano Mines and Zijing Mining, uh, a Chinese mining group. Uh, and Ivano Mines is listed on the Toronto Stock Exchange with a number of uh, important investors such as Robert Friedland, uh, Citic, uh, Zijin Mining as well, and, and a number of Western institutional investors. This diversity of shareholding matters, especially in times of uh, geopolitical tensions where it provides uh, some guarantee of stability. Before we take you on a virtual tour of Kamoa Kakula today, I would like to remind you of the history of this world-class project. We started in 1996 by acquiring 50,000 square kilometers of ground 
in the former Katanga province in the Democratic Republic of Congo. In 2008, our world-class geologist discovered the Kamoa deposit. And in 2013, the discovery was ranked as the largest high-grade undeveloped deposit in the world. In 2015, Ivano Mines and Sejin Mining signed a landmark agreement to develop the Kamoa deposit. But a year later, the Ivano Mines geologist discovered the ultra-high-grade Kukula deposit. And that was a real game changer. Five years later, we commissioned the first concentrator of the 3.8 million tonne per annum mine at Kukula. Our first phase consists of a 3.8 million tonne per annum concentrator plant that we commissioned in May of 2021. Our second phase is a duplicate model of 3.8 million tonnes per annum that's undergoing hot commissioning. The third phase will be larger than phase one and phase two and will also include a power project at Inga 2 and a smelter complex. We will come to the market with a pre-feasibility study in the third quarter of 2022. After the debottlenecking project in 2023, at 450,000 tons of copper per year, Kamoa Copper will be ranked as the fourth largest copper producer in the world. Quite significant if you consider that we only started producing in 2021. Let's now go and have a look at the magnificent Kamoa Copper Mining Complex in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Twenty twenty one was the maiden year of operations for Kamoa Copper when the phase one plant started in May twenty twenty one. For the year, we generated eight hundred and thirty one million dollars of revenue with a net profit before tax of just over $400 million, paired with a cash cost of $1.32 per pound of copper produced. The outlook for 2022, we are looking at a cash cost of between $1.20 and $1.40 per pound of copper, and copper production of between 290 and 340,000 tons of contained copper. Kamoa 17现场已经打厂甚至超厂 目前公司正在积极推进三期扩建工程，三期采矿部分主要开采肯索口、卡摩二期和卡摩二期的矿石。三期现场将建设在卡索口矿区，采用以一期和二期类似的工艺流程，设计有两条相同的五百万吨每年
respecting each other, committing to results, and you can see the work is done smoothly. What sets Kamoa Kakula apart is the fact that we have the two things. We have scale, but we also have grade. We've got a very, very high grade asset with the scale. So 40 million tons of copper is not a small asset, and the grade is fantastic. All our grades are between 4 and 6%. So even our lower grade asset, which is at Kansoko, is 4.5% copper. And then we've got Kakula, which is running over 6%. So the mining method that we employ at Kukula is drift and fill. It's a method that allows us to extract a very large proportion of the ore body, so above 90% of the ore body. And it's a paste fill. So you, you do your primary, secondary and tertiary drifts, which are all backfilled with paste fill. If you compare that to another mining method, for example, board and pillar, you'll have extraction rates, depending on depth, of about 50, 60, 70% at the most. With Zero Arm approach as safety principle, we've been able to link Kakula North decline and Kakula South decline, install the belt from underground to surface, open up more panels, even higher than expected, of a 6% copper, and we've been able to feed the plant without touching the stockpile. We did even make it bigger, over 3.7 million tons. 这个盘网能够起到这个比较好的这个成绩呢，我主主要呢有三个方面，一个方面呢是这个一个是管理团队呢，啊这个是比较强有力的，啊这个阶层呢也比较迅速，第二个呢这个工程队的施工组织啊还
We commissioned the phase one plant in May 2021 and reached steady state production in September, which was our fourth full month of production. Uh, the design for phase one is 475 dry tons per hour or 3.8 million tons per annum. Um, we expect to commission the phase two plant. That's a doubling of capacity from 3.8 million tons to 7.6 million tons. On the phase one plant since September, the operations team has consistently managed to beat design by between 10 and 15%. We have also identified over the past few months excess milling capacity. We've just initiated a debottlenecking process or scope of work where we will increase the design capacity from 7.6 million tonnes to 9.2 million tonnes. We expect that work to take approximately 12 months to complete. Aveno Mine Energy was created by the shareholder of Kamoa Copper as a specialized entity with a mandate to identify and develop capacity to power this world-class asset. We then entered into a public-private partnership with the national utility, Snell, to work together to strengthen the grid's capacity. So in uh, 2014, uh, an agreement was signed between Ivanhoe Mines Energy uh, and Snell for the rehabilitation and modernization of uh, three power stations that were part of Snell's portfolio. The first one being uh, Mwaringusha and then the two other ones being Koni and Nzilo. Mwaringusha since then has been uh, rehabilitated, modernized and is providing 78 megawatts to the national grid. So last year, when um, an amendment to uh, the 2014 agreement was signed with basically the effect of swapping out Koni and Zilo out of the agreement uh, and replacing it by the rehabilitation and modernization of a turbine at Inga 2. Well, the plans to construct a smelter, a direct to blister smelter, uh, are well underway and it will be the biggest of its kind on the African continent. And the intention now is to finalize that construction and, and to basically commission uh, by Q4 of 2024. But obviously for that to be possible, power will be crucial and that's why a very important milestone was reached last year, July of last year, 2021. Our contribution into strengthening the grid capacity will generate more power than required for operational reasons. Excess power will stay in the grid to serve the communities. And as we know, access to power is a key factor in stimulating economic growth. Copper deposits typically form in one of two styles, either very high tonnage but low grade porphyry deposits or much lower tonnage but higher grade deposits. It's very rare that you will find a deposit that is both high tonnage and high grade and it's possessing both the scale and the grade that makes Kamoa Kukula so unique. In addition, the deposit is shallow and its geometry and grade profile make it very amenable to safe highly efficient mechanized mining. The mineral resource at Kamoa is extensive, nearly 1.4 billion tons at an average grade of 2.7% copper. That's nearly 38 million tons of contained copper just in indicated. But it's the ability to target higher grade zones within this overall resource that allows us to declare a reserve at Kukula of over 100 million tons at a grade of 5.2% copper. That's decades of mining in excess of 5% copper. At Kamoa, we have a reserve of 125 million tonnes at 3.8% copper. The Western Foreland is undoubtedly one of the most prospective copper districts anywhere in the world. Kamoa Kukula was discovered in ground that was considered unprospective. Explorers would move into this area, but very quickly depart because they were in the wrong rocks for hosting copper which is fantastic because in the discovery of Kamoa and Kukula, we have unlocked a whole new geological terrain. And the Kamoa Kukula license is not a geological boundary. The prospect of geology extends for hundreds of kilometers and it is into this ground that we are now moving. We have two and a half thousand square kilometers of prospecting licenses 
we are using the same team that discovered Kamoa Kukula and the geological knowledge and insights gained from those discoveries. It's been very rewarding to be part of a team that has made a discovery that's led to it becoming a mine. I think any exploration geologist can attest to that. But to be part of a team that has made a discovery of this scale, to see the impact it's having on the people who work here who are being upskilled, the local communities who are being uplifted, and the impact on the Democratic Republic of the Congo as a country has been immensely rewarding. Well, Kamoa Copper has been blessed with uh, a world-class asset, um, world-class copper asset, uh, and that comes with uh, a huge opportunity to have a positive impact um, on communities um, around the project and even on the country as a whole. Uh, but it also comes with an important responsibility um, to have that impact uh, in, in a sustainable way uh, that can outlive uh, the project. There is a world-class technical training center where, where mining crews, uh, control room operators, uh, process area operators are, are being trained. Now the latest initiative is the creation of what we call a center of excellence. So it's a tertiary education that will be placed in the heart of Kamoa Copper's uh, mining operations and is aimed at creating the future leaders of the DRC's uh, mining sector. So it will be world-class uh, infrastructure uh, right next to where the operations actually happen. So theory and practice will be living side by side. And the academic program that will be offered uh, will be developed with international partners to ensure that indeed uh, no compromises are being made uh, in terms of quality of the education as well. The transformation department is, uh, is an approach to training and development. And uh, what is unique about it is that we aim to transform Congolese and move them into senior position uh, because we want to reduce our dependency on expatriates. And that's why we make sure that all expatriates train and transfer their skills to Congolese. And our department is responsible to make sure that that transfer is done properly. We have four key programs. We have the Kipaji program, we have succession planning, we have individual development plans, and we have women in mining. So Kipaji is a Swahili word, which means talent. It's a bunch of 30 people that have been selected uh, by managers and departments, and they go through assessments to identify their talent, because it's a word that means talent, as I say. And uh, we create training programs and mentorship programs for them so that they can be able to achieve their career goals. In Kamoa, I've seen that the skills transfer is being in action because we have the full support of the senior management. And that makes me proud to be into a department that is strongly believing into transforming Congolese. As we learn, we develop, as we grow the workforce, um, we create more capacity and excellence. In this, in this company of ours. We have a fantastic workforce. We've managed to train local Congolese people. My journey with Kamoa Copper started at early stage of exploration where I had a junior position. Through hard work and opportunities made available by Kamoa, I'm now the mine manager. We have a zero tolerance approach to safety and enforce a set of principles that ensure safe working conditions. Usalama, which means be safe in Swahili, is more than a program. It's a mindset that is deeply rooted in Kamoa's culture. I'm very proud of my journey with Kamoa. We have really come a long way. Gaining the trust and support from local communities have been my greatest challenge and achievement. With that, we have been able to build a world-class mine in the middle of Africa, surrounded by hardworking people and inspired communities. I think our safety record has been excellent considering the circumstances. We've got numerous cultures, numerous safety cultures on site, numerous languages being spoken on site, English, French, Mandarin, Swahili, and a number of local DRC languages. We reached nameplate capacity during the fourth month of production, which I think was remarkable and is a tribute to the operations team, the bulk of which are local Congolese. Our primary health care includes daily clinic visits, as well as a focus on malaria and HIV AIDS. 
we recently constructed a world-class hospital at the mine that includes a trauma facility and we have a large contingent of medical professionals working at Kamawa Kakula. This includes emergency response personnel that's available 24 hours a day. Managing the COVID-19 pandemic on site is an ongoing task. We have isolation facilities and we also embarked on a vaccine rollout throughout our communities and our staff. From the start, long before production, Kamoa adopted an early engagement approach with our surrounding community to understand their needs and expectations. The Sustainable Livelihood Program was created to eradicate hunger and poverty in these communities in a way that stimulates economic growth for generations. Over the past 10 years, local farmers have advanced from basic household sustenance to commercial levels of production. We are committed to long-term stakeholder collaboration to ensure that livelihood programs are designed to meet the specific needs of these communities. The Kamoa Enterprise Development Program reinforces a current mining business model, which embraces sustainable economic development through entrepreneurship, all of which created goods and services which can be sold back to the mine. We are particularly proud of the sewing, which is majority women, and we aim to create gender balance. Our next generation of entrepreneurs will come from these communities and their Sussex stories become part of Kamoa legacy. When asked what makes Kamoa truly exceptional, the usual answer is grade and scale. For me, what makes Kamoa exceptional are the people. From exploration through to being part of the 11,000 plus workforce we are today, it's only through the sheer willpower of our founder, our shareholders, our employees, the government and communities. That is what makes us truly exceptional. I want to thank the CRU for uh, putting together this uh, virtual tour. I think it must be of great interest to people in the copper industry globally. We're so happy that you're able to see our progress. Not everybody can come to our physical tour upcoming uh, after Indaba in May. And so the opportunity to show you our progress today is a great joy for all of our people. It's a tribute to our 25 years of efforts and we really appreciate the opportunity to show this to everyone in Santiago de Chile. All the best to all of you amigos, and thank you for your interest in our continuing efforts.